how do we do? I don't know. Let's go find out. Let's see how we did on this pantry challenge. We got this freezer completely cleaned out. It was mainly things from the garden. I just incorporated them into the meal plan. And little by little, we got it cleaned out. Yay! Freezer number two. We got this pretty much cleaned out. That is red pork for pork tamales. We're having a tamale making party this week. We'll get that all used up. And this freezer is cleaned out as well. This freezer here has three Salisbury steaks already cooked in sauce. There's a Sloppy Joe's, there's a vodka penny pasta sauce, and there's a ground beef uh, enchilada meat already prepared. I have a turkey, and behind there, you can't see it, I have one chicken, whole chicken. Now, I had a lot of pepperoni, cheese, and sausage, so I made all of these individual pizzas. Those will go quick. Let me show you how I make these individual pizzas. This will save you a ton of money. I use these seven inch cake rounds. They have a really glossy, waxy finish to them. And I was thinking, gosh, I bought these about 20 years ago. I got a pack of 50 from a restaurant supply. You can use them over and over and over again. When I finish, I just take a uh, cloth and wipe them clean and stack them up and put them away for the next time I make pizzas. The only time um, you might have a problem, you see how that's corrugated um, cardboard, is if the pizza sauce kind of gets in there and then the edge will get a little funky. That's happened a few times and I just toss them. But it's worth the investment because when you're making a ton of these, it's nice to have this platform to make like an assembly line. <laughs> anyway, let me show you how I, I put these together. One batch of dough makes six mini uh, pizzas and I'll put the dough recipe in the description box. I usually make a double batch and then I just put them on the sheet trays and one pint of pizza sauce is enough for 12 of these. So it's enough for a double batch of the pizza dough, which makes it kind of nice. And then I just take the spoon and spread out the sauce. Then I just start adding the toppings. I pre-cooked some Italian sausage and I just put a handful on it, spread it on out. Next, I put a handful of shredded mozzarella. I buy those in the big bag, so it makes it really economical. I'm adding a layer of pepperoni, and when you bake it, the pepperoni kind of spreads out. I don't know why, or maybe it shrinks. So I, I'm pretty generous with it, but you can put whatever toppings you want. And then we're just gonna put these trays in the freezer and flash freeze them. Once the pizzas have been flash frozen, it's really easy to take the cake rounds off, you just find a little edge and just give it a little tug and it'll pop right off. Look at that, perfect. Next, we'll get them vacuum packed in a food saver bag. So how do we cook these pizzas? Well, I had this iron skillet heating in the oven at 450 degrees, it's piping hot. I'm just going to take a little bit of avocado oil and drizzle a little on the bottom. And then I'm just going to open up our frozen pizza. Remember, we've already taken the cardboard off the back. Just plop it in there and into the oven it goes. I just took the pizza out of the oven. The bottom is nice and crisp. I like that. I'm just gonna let this sit for a couple of minutes just to cool down because it's scorching hot and then I'll get it cut. We're just gonna add a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese right on top. All right, let's get this cut. I like to do it in six. Okay. 
there you have it. A lot of times Ken and I will just split one and have a salad. Or if you're a really hungry teenager, you could eat the whole thing. So that's how I make the freezer pizzas. I hope this helps you guys. In this drawer, I have homemade Asian and Trader Joe's Asian uh, foods. We have marinated chicken. We have three more turkeys. I had no idea I had so many turkeys and hams. There's uh, chicken tenders down there. On the door, the top two shelves, we have chicken wings. I have some cranberries, two loaves of banana nut bread, a little overflow of butter, five packages of soft sole verde. I have tuna, masago, scallops, and shrimp, kind of like for a sushi night. Another pack of butter and then acai packets. So what's left? This freezer has a lot of berries and some bananas and things like that on the top shelf for smoothies. There is a lone mango sorbet. I have three spiral hams and then I have this to make prosciutto. I have a bunch of compound butters and salmon, butter, and then down here is just the residual fruits and some of the stuff from the garden. There's a lot of poblanos and jalapenos and I see some Brussels sprouts, apple pie filling, um, things of those nature. Um, below that, that's persimmon. I have that portion for my mom's persimmon bread recipe. I have Parmesan cheese and then I have some chicken tenders. On the door, I have roasted garlic. So I can make roasted garlic mashed potatoes really easy. It's a time saver. These I need to handle and make salsa verde. Um, I have some pearl onions. I have six lone pork chops, garlic scapes. There's some um, butternut squash under that that I'm gonna make into a soup. I have some onions, pesto, and this is some cookie dough. I can just pull a small pack and make some homemade cookies. There's more pesto. And then down at the bottom, I have yeast. We consolidated this freezer. There's already cooked uh, ribs. Uh, Ken takes care of that. We found six packages of three pound each of bacon. I was excited because I thought I was out of bacon. I have a couple packages of andouille sausage, a couple pork loins, a pork butt, Canadian bacon. I have one pound of breakfast sausage left, one pound of Italian sausage left. I have a little pork, uh, where are they there? Probably enough to make two burritos. And then I have two St. Louis cut ribs. Down here, there's three spiral hams back there. And then in front, those are hocks for making soups. I have more butter. And then on this shelf and that shelf, these are ham steaks like for breakfast. And I have one pepperoni stick left. And then in the basket, it's all assorted nuts. On the door, it's mainly from our Mennonite citrus haul. It's all citrus. One of the goals I had for the freezer was to get some single servings for lunches for our boys to take to work or school or uh, that type of thing. And I use these super cubes. These are two cup uh, portions. Fantastic. This freezer was one of the ones I had been working on. So far, I got eight of the 12 individual serving already cooked meals here. I have uh, plans for those four, so I'm gonna keep working on those. I have 11 pounds of hamburger left in the hamburger drawer. This is all luncheon meat and lamb chops, beef, roast, and then down here, it's hot dogs and hamburgers. On the door, we have overflow. I only have two of the carne asada left and three uh, beef shanks for asabuco, more overflow. And then the rest of this is beef stock. Last but not least, this is the freezer that we started. So this one you might be familiar with. We have the individual portions. I still need to do the turkey pot pie, but 
I got turkey, so <laughs> I'll have to get to that. And I have steaks and kebabs. And remember, we did those molded um, packages that are too deep. You can actually fit 24 on one shelf. This is the product I used. It's called Freezer Up. It has a flat bottom. It holds a gallon, a Ziploc baggie perfectly. And this has been such a great space saver. That is a wonderful product to really maximize every square inch of your freezer. The next shelf, I have steaks. I have beef taquitos and I made some chicken taquitos. I have the empanadas and then when I make those tamales, I'll put those down there. And then on the door, it's pretty similar from the last time you guys saw. I have the pie crust, the crostinis, overflow, and beef stock. How fantastic is this? I'm so excited, yay! One of the most important things that I did is I made an inventory of what I have in each freezer. I did it by each shelf. I have the item, how many I have. When I use it, I can just cross it off. And this has been a game changer. I've been using this for about 10 days now and it's amazing. I just meal plan from here and then just go out and go shopping in the freezers. Wow, I feel like on top of the world because even though I have, I still have a lot of food out there, we're gonna um, meal plan from the freezer for the next four months. And as every freezer gets used up and we can kind of consolidate things down, I'm gonna take a toothbrush and go out there and just scrub the inside outside of each of those freezers. They're gonna look like brand new when I get done with them. I'm gonna pull them out from the wall. I'm gonna vacuum the back of them, get the coils all vacuumed, mop the floor, get them put back in place. And hopefully July 1st, I will be ready for this delivery of this bulk meat. <laughs> and um, yeah, it feels pretty good. I think I got things pretty well under control and I was successful in being able to start incorporating some single serve um, meals, getting some batch cooking like the tamales and the pizzas and things like that. And then Sometimes I'll just like when I'm cooking dinner, I'll like double the batch and get, you know, a freezer meal in there a little at a time. Oh my goodness, it feels fantastic. Now, I always get asked the question, why do you have so many dang freezers? <laughs> and that's a good question. Uh, when we lived in California, uh, we had a completely different lifestyle. Like it'd be like four o'clock and I'd be like, what am I gonna cook for dinner? I'll run by Sprouts, I'll go over to Trader Joe's, you know. We had so many markets and stuff like that just so readily available to us that I never really gave it much thought. But when we moved here where there's four seasons and the nearest uh, Costco is, you know, nearly two hours away, <laughs> you start, you know, rethinking things, you know. You start expanding your pantry and when you grow food, you start preserving food, so you need a place to put it. And um, we started purchasing like a whole beef cow at one time, and you need the freezer space. When we were um, having our solar system put in, uh, it's a large system, it's a 25 kilowatt system, they needed to have an electrical load, and they calculate out it by freezer space, and it just turned out that we needed seven freezers, which I thought was ridiculous at the time because we were, you know, new from California. And I thought, I'll never fill up seven freezers. <laughs> and you do. When you buy a whole cow, you know, that might take up a couple freezers worth of stuff. And then you have pigs and then you have chicken and you have, you know, like uh, fish, like Ken, um, I think this is, this will be the fourth year that he's done King salmon fishing. So we do a lot of fishing, you know? And then if you have a garden, you put stuff in the freezer for the garden. So the seven freezers has really come in handy, even though we didn't really go out and intend to get seven freezers. <laughs> it was just kind of a requirement as the electrical load for our solar system to make it all work because it's a hybrid system. It's net metering, it has batteries, it has a generator backup. It's, it's, it's a little confusing, but it all works. 
and people always say, gosh, I hope that you never lose power. And the way that they have the solar set up, um, we won't lose power. It's independent. It's got its own batteries. And then when there's a grid down, the net metering panels kick in. They have some kind of electrical switch. And if the sun isn't producing enough, then it's off of batteries. And if the batteries go down a little bit, the generator kicks on. So it's, it's it, they have it all set up like that. So it's a really good um, system. You know, we don't have to pay for electricity. We always have excess at the end of the year. We sell it back to the company. So all of our electricity is paid for and we make a little money. And we have seven freezers <laughs> so that we can afford to purchase a whole cow and save money. You know, it's just this whole mindset, which is a little foreign to us. You know, living in California, you don't think about these things, but being here, it's given us an opportunity to think more like a homesteader, you know? And so that's why we have seven freezers. And I only go into this because I always get asked the question whenever I show my freezers, it's like, why do you have seven freezers? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> anyway, I am so thankful that I participated in this challenge. It gave me the the kick in the derriere. <laughs> Can you say derriere on YouTube? I don't know. Um, I needed that little, you know, jump start to get things going. And the next thing I'm going to tackle is spring cleaning, you guys. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for um, cheering me on and I feel like we're in a great place and a manageable, you know, amount of work that we did is going to get us through these next four months. So we'll save a little more money and then we'll get our next bulk meat order. <laughs> so that's the conclusion. Oh, I have one more thing. You know, one thing that I kind of learned that I thought would just be... Um, I don't know, I'm surprised I, I even feel this way, but I've decided um, that the middle of September to like Thanksgiving, I'm gonna be prepping my freezer this year for like uh, freezer prep, batch cooking, making sure that I have those individual portions, you know, cooked and out there. I'm gonna do the, that type of work during that time of year because, you know, I'm getting ready right now to go into the gardening season and then you go into full food preservation and probably by mid-September, it tends to slow down a little bit. And, you know, you're through the, with the tomatoes, you're through with the tomatillos, <laughs> it gets a little bit better. You know, you still have the apples and the pumpkins and things like that, but it slows down a lot. And I think it would be the perfect time to kind of get the freezers, you know, really in good position. And I'd also like to do some holiday prep, like appetizers and treats and whatever I can get done ahead of time. Because when Thanksgiving hits, I want to be in full family mode where we're just living in the moment, enjoying the holidays. And then when January comes around next year and the pantry challenge comes around, I want to be prepared, you know, where I can go out there and pull, um, you know, a, a chowder or something or some soup or something from the freezer. And if I decide to make homemade bread, I'm doing it because I want to. And then you can smell the aroma in the house. And it's just going to be like a slower living through the months of January, February and March. That's what I want for myself. You know, living here in four seasons, it's just like this natural rhythm. And I felt that maybe because I wasn't prepared for this challenge, I decided to do it like a day or two before without any prep. I was working pretty hard. You know, I had to make the bread. I had to make the stock to make the soup. I, you know, it was just because, you know, I had just been using my freezer just to store meat and a few veggies, you know, and I'm an ingredient canner as well. So I had to prepare everything and I really don't want to work that hard. Um, during January, February, and March. I want that to be a time of self-reflection, a time where I can sit in a big, you know, leather chair in the corner and read a book and get lost in it. And it can be okay, <laughs> you know? I wanna have it be a time of rejuvenation for myself. So I like the idea of the pantry challenge. I just wanna be more prepared, you know? 
I want to have my freezers working for me where I can pull from it and then just have fun in the kitchen um, practicing, you know, making sourdough recipes or making homemade bread and doing all those things, which um, I think would be a lot of fun. And it would also, you know, eat up what we put up for the previous year and get us in a good shape going into the next year um, to know what to grow and what to preserve and, you know, and the cycle goes on. But that's what the one thing that I've really taken from this challenge is kind of a lifestyle change. You know, like I'm planning every year to take mid-September to Thanksgiving and get my freezers in order so that the holidays will be a breeze. And then the first three months, I can just kind of kick back a little and just have fun in the kitchen and do what I want to do. And just have a time where it's just kind of a slow living uh, time of the year. That's what I want. Well, anyway, that's the pantry challenge, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching until I see the next video.